Oh, hello there! Well guys, I did it. The channel's namesake finally makes an introduction. Took long enough. Yeah, so surprise, surprise, I haven't actually drawn that many dinosaurs on this channel. I mean, I did that Ceratosaurus and that Jurassic Park T-Rex. The novel version. The juvenile one. As a matter of fact, my profile picture is the only good ichthyovenator drawing that I've done. What do you know? So, yeah, no, it's time for a change. We need to improve a bit. Oh yeah, I should probably explain what this thick even is. Ichthyovenator is a basal spinosaurian spinosaurid. And this is all we have of it. No! Yeah, no, it's really not that much to go off of. Oh yeah, it has a Jurassic World toy! Yeah, yeah okay, I should probably start. <laughs> Here I'm actually trying to sketch some of the actual bones. These are the cervical and dorsal vertebrae. And the reason I did that was so I could get a better understanding of the anatomy to try, keyword being try, to create a skeletal. The one thing I didn't count on is that I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, oh what took you so long, idiot? And this is the only decent thing I did, which was the head. But even then, it's not that great. So I'm gonna stick with the Wikipedia skeletal just for accuracy. This is exciting. I'm using gouache for the first time. Now, because this is my first time, I'm not gonna use it very well, so please be gentle. Here, I'm painting a great blue heron. And the reason I'm doing that is because the current um, hypothesis on spinosaurines is that they were wading predators similar to herons. So I thought, hey, why not use a uh, actual heron to try to figure out how to get the mannerisms and maybe even the gaze of a Spinosaurian, you know? What was that? Oh, don't mind me, just doing some concepts here. It's always good to have a thumbnail sketch or four, and I thought of several different ideas, two of which were more heron-like, one of them was more crocodile-like in terms of behavior, and the last one was a t turtle soup connoisseur. Now here, I'm finalizing the two sketches I like the most, or combining ideas. So, the bottom one is um, the ichthyovenator swimming with a turtle shell in its mouth, and I can explain both of those in a bit. And the second one is more heron-like, and of course, I prefer the more interesting one of the two, so I picked the turtle shell one, and that's what we're going with. But before we start the actual painting, I'm making a model of the head. Now, it's a very crude model, but it is a model nonetheless. And the reason I'm doing this is because this is something that lots of paleo artists do, because besides these guys, there's no dinosaurs alive today. So it's always good to have something to reference if you're trying to get naturalistic or realistic light, because drawing for imagination is too hard to get right, and I don't want something creeping into the uncanny valley, even though this sculpture already is creeping into the Uncanny Valley, but that's the drawing I'm going to reference for this whole thing. Whoops, almost forgot to talk about color. So Spinosaurians were thought to be waiting predators. I've said this a bunch of times already, so I'm going to shut up about that. But the way we base colors for dinosaurs is with modern animals. So I'm going to use several species of a modern heron, um, most notably the tiger and agami heron and I'm going to use those to create a reasonable looking color scheme, something, you know, that will actually look nice but also wouldn't be a detriment to the creature while it lived, so it can't be too colorful but it also can't be, you know, boring. <laughs> Oh, you know, because of the fact that the head is non-existent for this guy, I based it off of an Irritator, because that's the closest relative we have, and Spinosaurus. Something smart to do is to use cheaper paint while doing a base layer, because this will get good coverage while not wasting too much money, until I got impatient and decided to go for it anyways. So that's what's happening. 
great, great. Way to not take my own advice. got a few ideas for why this Ichthyopinator is carrying a turtle shell. Maybe it ate the turtle, which I think is unlikely since the shell isn't, you know, damaged in any way. But what I think is either it's playing with it, since, you know, adult animals do play with things, or it's going to offer it to another Ichthyopinator in some sort of courtship. And we see that in modern birds sometimes. So just a little bit of speculative behavior that can be up to your interpretation. I have based the turtle off of Atticus because there's an Atticane turtle, which, fun fact, appears in Dinosaur Train. I'm Adam. Adam Atticus. I'm a turtle. Whoa! It was about here that I started picking up on the problem of an over-textured dinosaur. See, the scales really shouldn't be that big, and even if they were that big, they shouldn't be vi that visible from this far away, so I had to muddy them up. Also, I had to, you know, make the teeth smaller just because of the fact that I think that these dinosaurs had at least some sort of lip covering and even discarding that, those teeth are T-Rex teeth. They're just, just, just no. You know, I'm probably going to be quiet for the rest of this because pretty much all I'm doing afterwards is fiddling with the water and fixing things up. Wow, what a journey that was. Now we just need one more thing. What do you guys think? <laughs>